In this video, I am going to show you how to use Pinecone vector database from within your AWS environment. You can either use EC2 instance or you can use AWS SageMaker Studio or AWS SageMaker Notebook instance. For this particular example, I'm going to use AWS SageMaker Notebook to connect to Pinecone vector database and then load some pre-trained data set into my Pinecone vector database, create an index and run simple semantic search. If you don't know what is Pinecone vector database, I have another video where I describe in very simple words what exactly is vector database, what is Pinecone and what are embeddings. Just to give you a quick recap, all we did in Pinecone vector database is we store vectors. What are vectors? So you know that large language models work on huge data sets. This data set could be like something Wikipedia or all the documents in Stack Overflow or your own company's documents. First, we tokenize these documents into something called as data set and then we create embeddings out of them. These embeddings are mathematical vector notations which get stored as embeddings into the vector database. And these vectors could have multiple dimensions. And this is the same concept as you might have learned in the algebra in your high school. Now, if you again, if you don't know, I will put the link to that video where you can learn more about it. In order to use Pinecone, the first thing you need to do is to go to pinecone.io. Again, I'll drop the link in video description. Then on the right hand side, if you don't have an account, click on sign up for free with your email. I already have one. So log in to Pinecone and they are very generous to give us a starter free package to play around with this Pinecone, which I'm using right now. So once you would log in here, you will be presented with something like this. You won't have any index. The first thing here in Pinecone console you need to do is to on the, go to API keys on left hand side. So click there. Now, make uh, if you don't have any API key here, Create a, click on create API key on the right hand side and then you will be presented with this mask API key. You can copy it by clicking here and also make note of this environment as you will be needing it once we try to connect to this fine code. Cool. Okay. Now I'm going back to my AWS console to see my if my AWS SageMaker notebook instance is ready or not. So let's go there. So this is the AWS HMaker notebook instance I have created with C5X large instance, which is good enough for this compute intensive job. Click on open Jupyter lab and it will open the Jupyter lab in another window. So let's wait for it to load. My studio lab has loaded. For this example, I'm just going to use this conda underscore Python 3 notebook type. Click here and this is our notebook instance. And now let's start building and connecting the spine cone on our AWS. Let's start. I'm installing the prerequisite libraries by using pip, uh, pip command. So let's run it. And as you can see, I'm installing pip cone client, spine cone data set, and also the sentence transformers. So let's wait for it to finish. Libraries are done. They have given some warnings, but let's ignore them for now. Let's also install the transformers if it hasn't installed already. Okay, it's already done. That's cool. Next, let's move on to the next step. In the next step, I'm going to load this pre-built data set from Cora L, uh, LM, which is a mini data set um, geared towards sentence transformer. So let's load it. And you can see that uh, we are also skipping some of the uh, dimensions so that to make it quick and easy. And in this step, we are not really preparing the data. So let's wait for it to finish. It takes a bit of a time sometimes. The larger your data set is, the larger it will be. And in the last step, we are just confining this data set to around 80,000 rows. Took around five minutes for this data set to load, but it's done, which is great. In the next step, 
we need to initialize pinecone with the API key and the environment which we got from this screen which I showed you earlier. So let's set them and also import some of the usual suspects or libraries. In the next step, we are creating our own index on the data set. You can see that I have given it a name my semantic search. I'm importing the time library and then I'm creating this index in pine code if it doesn't exist. So let's run it and wait for it to finish. Shouldn't take too long and this is the beauty of pine code that it is quite fast. So let's wait for it to finish. Our index is ready. Now let's do the upset operation to populate this index. This takes a bit of a time, not as long as you would expect. It has given me an error. Let's see what exactly that error is. So it says, un uh, okay, I think it just got reset. Sometimes we just have to make uh, rerun it to get it populated. And I will rerun it. And let's also first check, go to indexes, and then just refresh it here to see if our index has appeared. We have what we have just created. I'm reloading my screen, and our my semantic search index should appear here. So you can see our semantic search um, index is there. And it is running green, no error. So let's go back to our notebook and rerun that command. Let's wait for it to finish. This time, our um, the second run is running fine, no errors so far, and it's been running for three, four minutes. While it runs, let me also show you the semantic search index on Pinecone's website. So this is the whole index. There are vectors which are being loaded in this. Uh, index as you can see now they are 43,000 and this just keep an eye on it and it, this count is increasing when it reaches 80,000 that is what we are loading into it we should be good so half half of it is done and on the right hand side you can see that this is running in Google Cloud uh, and how cool is that our, our notebook is running in AWS but our, our database it is actually database is running in GCP and then there are a lot of other metrics which you can check. The vector count is increasing. How many requests are there? If there are any errors, I don't see any errors there. And what's the latency? And pod is running, which is a Kubernetes pod. And upset. We can also upset the vectors from here, by the way. Instead of from the command, you can also use the curl command for it. Okay, so going back at the top, you can see we have we are already at seventy seven thousand. and it should go until eighty thousand and we should be good then. So let's wait for it to finish. Okay, eighty thousand is done. Going back to my so that's also done as there is no static. So our data is loaded now. Let's make some queries. The query I'm making um, okay, let me copy my query command again. And don't worry about if the queries which I'm using. I will put in all the queries which I'm using. Okay, let's wait for it to finish. It's still running. Our sentence transformer is ready for the query now. This is a query I'm going to use. And what we are expecting here to be returned from that vector database is that all the similar questions which it will find in the text. I'm asking it which city has the highest population in the world. Let's run it to see what it returns. So there you go. So you see that we have asked this highest population in the world. It has given us similar questions which it found in the text. What's the world largest city? What's the biggest city? And then it has also returned some of the scores which it found within the embeddings. And it is also returning us the sparse values. If you want to trim it down and just um, get the text from here, then simply you can use um, the Visual Python loop for this matter. You click here, and then you see that it has just returned us what is our largest city and only these values. Now, um, all of these examples I have pulled in from 
fine cones on website and I will also drop the link to this notebook which you can even run in the Google Colab. So this is the whole code and there are a lot of other things too in this one. If I go back to my indexes and reload it just to see what sort of metrics it has or you can even click on the refresh button on this website and on here the this one otherwise it refreshes in 10 minutes so there you go you can see that the vector count is 80,000 these are our requests which I made shortly and then it has dropped down no errors so far and this is the latency matrix here also you can check the, your pod fullness and this is especially useful when you have a production workload all in all a really good managed vector database because you don't have to worry about all the underlying infrastructure i'll be doing more videos around it um, in order to generate my own data set and then putting in some semantic search on top by using this indexes in the fine cone vector database i hope you like it please consider subscribing to the channel thank you